Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be continuing on with the test strip line 75 and we're going to do binary tree maximum path sum. So in this problem, a path in a binary tree is a sequence of nodes where each pair of adjacent nodes has an edge connecting them and a node can only appear in the sequence at most once. Note the path does not need to pass through the root. The path sum of a path is the sum of a node's values in the path. Given the root of a binary tree, return the maximum path sum of any non-empty path. So in this example, Something like this is actually considered a path, so this would be six. And in this example, the optimal path is over here. So if you notice in these problems, basically a path is either gonna be a straight line, like right, like this, something like this could be a path, or even one node can be a path, or a path is like this V shape, right? These are the only two possibilities. So it's either gonna be like, so let's, let's see what happens if it's the V shape, right? The V shape is basically left, some kind of left output, some kind of right output and the root, right? Or we can have just the node itself, or we can have the node and something to the left or the node and something to the right. So those are the only cases, right? Node and something to the left, node and something to the right, or just the node itself. And we need to try to maximize that. So this is actually gonna be a pretty straightforward problem. All we're going to do is notice for any node, like let's say we have this node, we can use just the node as a path. We can use the node and the left as a path, or we can use the node and the right as a path, right? Or the whole thing. But when we return, we can't return something like this to this node because this would not be a path, right? That does not work. You can't, because the reason it doesn't work is because you'd go down here, then you'd come over here, let's say, and then you'd have to come back up. So you'd visit this node 20 twice. So a path can only have one of these V-shaped things and it has to be at the current node you're at. So this V-shape has to be at the current node you're at. But when we return, we want to either return the node or the node and the right or the node and the left. Either one of those is fine, but we can't return this whole thing to the node up here. Now let's think about what would be the best thing, right? We want the biggest path possible. So let's say we have this left for a node and we have a right for a node. Right? And we actually have the node value. Let's think about what we actually want to return up to the node before. Let's think of like what the recursion would look like here. So obviously if the left is negative, we're not going to want that. And if the right is negative, we're not going to want that, but we can only return one of these maximum. So we just want to return the maximum of these two, but let's say they're both negative. Let's say it says negative 15 and negative seven. Then when we return up here, we actually just want to return 20. We don't want to act, we don't want to include any of these in the path. So actually we want to return the maximum of the left or the right only if it's greater than zero. Otherwise we just return zero because we don't want to include those nodes, right? So let's actually do that. So we're going to return the maximum of either one of these or zero, whichever one is bigger. Now that's how, that's what we want to be returning right into the upper node. And then we can use that because if we only take the left and or the right, then whatever node we return up to that, that thing can be part of its path. Right? So like, let's say we return this path, we could add that to this path, right? Or we return this path, we could add it as well, or we return the node itself. We can add it like those are all valid or nothing at all. Right? Well, like what if that's the other thing is, so we, we want to include the left and we want to include the left or the right, whichever one's bigger or zero. But what if the node value is negative as well, right? What if we have this? Then what would we want to return? Well, we would we just want to return zero because our optimal path is just not going to include this, right? Like we don't want a negative path. So we're never going to return that because if you have to pick at a node between choosing the node or the node and its right value, you're never going to want to pick a right value that's negative. So node, we are also going to, going to return the max of the node value or zero. So that's what we want to be returning. And then we can be returning node plus this section right here. I'll call that like L or R or something, right? We L or R or zero, whichever one is the biggest. So that's what we want to be returning. But when we're at a node, how do we actually calculate the biggest path? So when we're at a node, we do want to try to find the path using that node because we can't have an empty path, but how do we do that? So it's kind of similar too, right? So for a node, you have to use the node value. And then you simply say, I, you can use the left and the right, right? Like this is a valid path or this is a valid path or whatever. 
So if we're at a node, we can use the left output and the right output, but do we want to? Not necessarily. So our, our add a node is going to be node value. So let's just call value. We have to use it. Plus, if the left is positive, we want to use it. So if left is greater than zero, we want to use it. Otherwise, we just don't want to use it. Similarly, if the right is greater than zero, we want to use it. So at every node, we will just check if the left is greater than zero, we want to use it because that will give us a bigger number. And if the right is zero, we want to use it because that'll give us a bigger number. So we add up all these three things and then we get some output and then we simply check is that output greater than our stored result that will just start out at like zero or whatever. Or I guess we probably don't want it to be zero. We probably want it to be like the root value, right? Because assuming every node is negative, you still need to have a path with one node. So we can just initialize something to be you know, like, or we can make a negative infinity or whatever we want, as long as, as long as we can't have negative nodes. So just to recap, at every node, we're going to be returning the node's value if we're only going to be returning the node's value if it's actually greater than, like, we're going to be finding what's the best path using that node, right? So for 20, we're going to say, okay, well, what's the best path, what's the best path using the node? It's going to be the node's value right? So you can't return the node left or the node right without using the node value, right? The path has to come through the node. So we're going to say, let's return the node's value plus the greatest of left or right or zero, right? If they're both negative, we just want the node's value. But we don't need to return the node's value because if the node's value is negative, like let's say these are all negative, then for a path starting from here, we don't even want any of this. So we're going to say, let's return the node's value plus left or right or zero, whichever one is bigger. And if that whole expression is negative, then we'll just return zero. Similarly, at a node, when we find the biggest path using that node, we're gonna say, okay, let's take the node's value. We have to use it now. It has to be a non-zero path. And let's add the left and let's add the right, but we only wanna add the left or the right if they are non-zero. Otherwise, we will just not add those at all. And so that's what you'd wanna have for that. So now we have enough to code it up and I'll show you how it works and it'll be a little bit easier to explain. So first we are going to just initialize the result equal to the root because as you can see, there is at least one node. So we can just make it the root dot val. We'll just say that's, you know, that's our default case. Now we're going to have a traverse function and it is going to, so for the type, we are going to traverse nodes and null nodes. And we didn't really talk about what to what to return when we have a null node, but that's pretty straightforward, right? We can just return zero there. And we are going to return a number. And so our function is going to say, if not node, meaning it's null, let's just return zero, right? Like what's the path sum of a null node zero? Now we need to get the left and the right. So we can say const left equals traverse node.left, same thing to right. Now, what we need to do is we need to try to maximize our result using this node. So to maximize our result, it's gonna be math.max, right? We're gonna take the old result and we have to use the node's value and we have to use the left and the right, but I'll kind of show you how this will work. So technically we don't have to use the left and the right, but we're gonna make sure the left and the right will never be negative. And let me show you how to do that. So we are going to return here math.max of the, we're gonna say let's return zero or node.val, we have to use it when we return the path plus, and then we are gonna return the max of left or right, right? So left, or right. And remember, we don't necessarily have to use, um, we don't necessarily have to use uh, left or right, right? So we can return either node.val plus one of these, or we need to actually get the math.max of left or right or zero, right? So we don't necessarily have to use them. We can use one or the other or zero, right? Because for a node, like let's say for this node, for this node, let's say these values are both negative, we actually wouldn't even want to include them in the path, right? So we're gonna not include those. So we're gonna say, let's return the left or the right or zero, whichever one's the biggest, plus nodes value. But if that whole thing is negative, then let's return zero. So that'll ensure that this left and right will never be negative. 
So you can just add them because they'll either be zero or positive number. Finally, we need to call traverse on the root and we need to return the result. So let's return the result and let's take a look. And it looks like it worked. All right, so you can see it's very efficient. And let's think of the time and space. And so hopefully that makes sense that in order, essentially in a path, there's only like one V shape in that path, right? So the path can only come through a node one time and the rest of it has to be going straight down. Okay, so what are we doing, right? We are traversing the tree. So we are gonna traverse every single node in the tree. So that's O of N and the rest of it is this is all linear time essentially. So we're traversing O of N. And for the space, as always, if your tree is completely unbalanced, right? Literally looks like this. Your stack frames here are gonna add up and your maximum recursive stack frame is going to be this entire tree. So that will also be O of N space. And uh, yeah, so I think that's it for this problem. Like I said, pretty good solution here. And uh, if you uh, liked it, then please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next TypeScript problem probably tomorrow. So thanks for watching.